so we've used some standard symbols in Illustrator. We've loaded some more in, and again, you've probably had a bit of a good look through these now. See, so there's some pretty cool stuff that you can load in. Um, but we can also make symbols out of our own artwork. So this snowflake that we drew in a previous exercise, I'm just going to use this. And I'm actually just going to scale it down a little bit because it will actually drop it in at actual size. So let's just bring it down a tad there. And I'm just going to grab the artwork and I'm going to drop it on top of my symbols panel there. And these bits here, I'm just going to keep as a movie clip and just click OK. So therefore, we have a symbol in there. So I can just drag it off and start using it as I do the other symbols. But there's a really cool way we can actually apply symbols to our artboard. I'm going to come over to my toolbar now and come down here right near the bottom. There's a one called the symbol sprayer. And if I hold down my mouse on the symbol sprayer, I've got all these different options here. Look, symbol shifter, scruncher, blah, 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 blah. So let's start with the symbol sprayer to get us going. So symbol sprayer, I'm going to choose my symbol and I can just basically spray my symbol all over the page. Look, loads and loads of different instances here. And all of these instances of the symbol, much like the original symbols, are all linked back to my original symbol here. So if I want to edit these, I can double click in here, make some changes, press escape, and it'll update all of these instances. But what I've actually done here is create what's called a symbol sprayer group. So if I go to my selection tool, look, all these symbols are all linked together. And again, I can't move with my direct selection tool. It's a complete group. But when it is a symbol sprayer group, I can do all this cool stuff with it. So I've got symbol shifter. Let's click here. And I can pull the symbols around and move them where I want them to be within the group. Grab hold of them. I've also got symbol scruncher. This is going to tighten them up a little bit, close them up. Now, anything that does um, one action like scruncher, there's one that scales them in a minute. If I press the Alt key, and click it does the opposite so opposite to scrunch is I don't know what the opposite to scrunch is but relax or whatever it is it makes more space basically so I'm scrunching and then I'm pressing the alt key and I'm doing the opposite there so you can go backwards and forwards with it okay so scruncher uh, sizer so let's click on this look the ones I click on will go randomly bigger they the longer I click the bigger they get look and again alt key will reduce the size as well so the alt key is really important when we're using the symbol spray because it does the opposite of whatever the action is that you're telling it to do and spinner again these are fairly self-explanatory most of these here look but i can really spin these around so really what it enables me to do is if i am doing a background with a load of snowflakes to really sort of randomize it okay really sort of move it around and make it look a little bit less uniform and stainer this is a really useful one actually the stainer because we know to change the color of my snowflake what I'm gonna have to do is go back into my main symbol okay and then make the change here but that means all of the snowflakes will look exactly the same which isn't what I want so with the stainer whatever color I've got in my fill okay let's do something radically different let's go to like a pink color here what it's gonna do is just stain the instances of that symbol with that color okay so if I click on the color look oops sorry I need to select the symbol group first sorry my mistake let's go back into symbol stainer choose our color again and there look when I start clicking you can see it stains those instances and again the longer I click so if I really hold down or keep clicking it goes really dark and then just do a quick click it just stains it slightly but again alt key really important let's press the alt key and it will go backwards look go back to being blue so again you can really randomize the colors the stain so it still uses the same tint values it just really just stains that instance of that symbol and symbol screener again this is useful because this does the transparency so I can really start to lighten some of these up look the longer I go the more transparent they go but again much like the other tools alt key will do the opposite look will bring those symbols back to full strength okay so let me just move these around a little bit actually symbol shift let's pull these in a little bit tighter so I've got a bit more of a space now the only thing when we do create a symbol group a symbol sprayer group sorry is it's a bit hard to control the outline okay it's a bit random the edges of this so we can actually refine this and crop it down to a certain shape that we actually want so what I need to do is create the shape so again this can be anything we could have drawn a, sh a specific shape with a pen tool if we wish but let's just go to the star tool for now let's draw a nice big star over the top so what I'm aiming to do 
is crop my symbol sprayer group down to that star shape. So to do that, I'm going to select both the symbol sprayer group and the star. So let's drag across here, look. So I've got both of them selected together. And I'm going to go to Object, down to Clipping Mask, and then Make. Okay, so or Control and 7. So that's a pretty good shortcut. So quite a useful thing to do this, cropping things down to specific shapes. All you need to do is make sure you've got a shape on top of some other shapes. Then do this, and you can see it crops down to that specific shape. So again, much more refined. And I can release it the same way, Object, Clipping Mask, and Release to release it as well. Now, what I've done here is actually getting quite complex. Okay, so I've got a symbol instance. That symbol instance is in a group of symbol sprayers. Okay, a symbol sprayer group, and that symbol sprayer group has been cropped down to a shape, to a clipping mask. Okay, so to undo all this, I've got to go back quite a few steps. I can undo the clipping mask, I can release the symbol sprayer group, and I can, I can break the link to the symbol. But if I wanted to say now really tweak this around and go with my direct selection tool and just pull a few of these little bits around or change the color, I can basically expand this out into individual anchor points. So let's go to Object, Expand. Okay, Object and Fill that we want to expand, click OK. Right, so now look, we've got, what I've done is expand it out of the symbol spray group into individual symbols. So these are still linked to that symbol there. Let's just select it all again. Object, expand again. Object and fill, yeah, so click OK. And now what I've done is actually expand it back out to just be an anchor points look. So I can completely release all of these items from being linked to the symbol. So now I literally just have a piece of editable vector artwork. Okay. You may not want to do that. You may want to keep it linked to the symbol. You may want to keep it in the symbol spray group so you can move it around. But if you do want to make it completely editable so you could change it, the anchor points individually, you do need to do that. So symbols are really cool, really good way of applying the symbols as well, that symbol spraying groups. So have a really good go and a little play around with that.